Oh, hello, people, and welcome to the video version of the Linux Action Show. This is the behind-the-scenes recording for Season 10, Episode 4. It's um, exciting. Now, these uh, these video versions are always a work in progress. What we're going to try to do is incorporate different screen visuals of what we're talking about and things like that. And um, we'll be tweaking things. We have a few things that we aren't tweakers. 100% yet. But uh, we're getting closer and closer with every release. Um, Brian really likes people looking up at him from kind of a lap it's position. Really, it's really important you guys get in on there and be like... <laughs> I just like that idea. And Everyone's Mike, looking up at me. And uh, my lighting for my shot is not super great because there is a wall there. I can't really put a light. And then a lot of you don't like these microphones in our face, but we, uh, you know, we got to give love to the audio <laughs> you gotta people. Do, you got to do what you got to do. It's an audio do. show primarily, yeah. but we're working on the video stuff. We've been experimenting today all day with wireless cam um, wireless mics, and, you know, we're getting closer and closer every day. Hey, Brian, what, what do you think you about do? uh, doing a podcast? I'm all right with that if you are. All right. Uh, tell me when and I will hit it. Hey, you should hit it right now. And welcome to Season 10, Episode 4 of the Linux Action Show. My name is Brian. With me, of course, is Chris. Hey, Brian. The HRP-4C robot runs Linux. And this is kind of a super creepy one. So No, this is beyond creepy. This is what I have gathered from a Google translated link, but this is a project put on by several different corporations that started in 2006 as a three-year plan. Much like a five-year journey, this is a three-year plan to build a robot that is extremely human-like. So they're on a continuing mission then? Yes. They're on a continuing mis mission, and uh, this robot... Um, it looks like uh, an Asian female and um, runs Linux. Now, there are videos of it in operation online, and um, if you want to get a little creeped out, this is definitely the thing to check out because it is definitely a lot one of those lines yeah. that's uh, maybe a little too far. Maybe it's kind of yeah. a little too far. Her so shirt's I'll, I'll real put a, tight I'll put a what I'm saying. I'll put a link to this in the show notes, and um, hmm, yeah. you can, uh, if you want to get yourself a little freaked out, that's what you can do. You can go look at that. Yeah. 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 I, I I was uh I was initially going to include this in an earlier episode of Linux Action Show uh, earlier this season, but uh, then I had a few other things come up, like you know that guy's finger that ran Linux. Oh man! So I've been saving this one. That was creepy too. Yeah. What's up with all the creepy things running Linux lately? I, I think don't know. next next runs Linux. Let's make let's make well, not creepy. Hey, to be fair, I want it to be adorable. If the next runs Linux, right. better be like the fuzziest rabbit ever. Just saying though, to be fair, I just recently did the te the new Tesla uh, sedan runs <laughs> Linux. <laughs> That was kind of adorable. Right? I did like that. Right? That was a sexy beast. All right, Brian. So, uh, boy, we, uh, we've had a couple busy weeks. We know we're oh, back to man. two weeks now, which is awesome pants. And um, the, It feels uh, good. Was it just last weekend? No, it was two weekends ago. We had Linux Fest Northwest, and we had a pretty good turnout. That was a lot of fun. We had some yeah. lunch with some yeah, tutors. Yeah, that was a and, good time. Um, you did a uh, presentation that got some noi notoriety, which was fun. Yeah, a little more than I kind of expected on that one. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we were a little worried. We we I I was joking around before, and I'm like, we're gonna show up to this. We titled the presentation "Linux right. Sucks," right. kind of a little tongue in cheeky, and we got there, and we're like, man, like four people are gonna show up, and it's gonna be like four of the Linux Action Show listeners who were like, you know what, we'll show up just to be supportive of Brian, and no one else would come. But no, we, we, we did pretty well. I, they, uh, they put me in this little tiny uh, classroom that was supposed to fit 40 people. I think we pulled in like 65 It's a It's a technical so. college, so um, it has, yeah, basically different different classrooms and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so it, it went well. And then uh, uh, we did this, uh, we did a quick and dirty video recording of it. Chris just put the camera in the corner mm -hmm. and pointed it at With me. With a shotgun mic. And, uh, and uh, you know, we had some lighting issues and sound issues because, you know, we were just rolling with it. And uh, despite all of that... Uh, Hell, I don't even know how many views the thing's gotten at this oh, point. Oh, a lot. It's, I haven't checked the numbers lot. for a long time. It, but it was ridiculous. Well, the first 24 hours was 30,000, roughly. Yeah. And uh, and then at that, that was point, just the first 24 hours. That was just the first 24 hours. That was before hours. it hit everywhere. That Right. That was when it was just like, oh, people started to notice, hey, is it on dig? Yeah, I think so. And then from there, it just went insane. It went nuts. Yeah. It's, it, it's kind of ridiculous in a way. Um, so uh, the the great thing about it though is it's really got a lot of people talking and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so you know, go to you go to the forum for almost any distro and there's a thread and like everyone like Gen two folk are talking about the Red Hat folk are talking about it. there's even a thread in the Mepis forum about it so it's uh, awesome it, that's it's pretty great and yep. so people are actually talking about the stuff that was in it and not just not just flame wars people are actually being constructive. 
uh, except for with one or two uh, exceptions. There but, are uh, always a few exceptions. People boycott Novell. But for the most part, you know, people are being very cool. People are being cool, and as long if you if you watch the presentation, then I think a lot of you know it's a little it's a little uh, in your face the title, but the uh, the quality of it's kind of cathartic actually. And it is it is literally uh, it just you know a camera taping a presentation, but it is all oh, about totally. it's all about what's said and things like that. And Brian has made the slides available. Um, and then, uh, which you can find over at his site, lunduke.com, we have it linked up at jupiterbroadcasting.com, as well as just a tour of Linux Fest Northwest, where I did an interview with the OpenSUSE community manager. We talked to, uh, uh, actually, uh, some guys from your hometown uh, that are doing, yeah. um, they are like, they, they specialize in taking old machines and like getting some life out of them again. So like we had a 386 and a 486 on camera uh, running yeah, Linux. Yeah, yeah. And we talked to some guys from PCBSD. It was just, you know, overall, it was a lot of fun. And uh, we had a good time and we got a few booth shots. And I think uh, if you're interested in and kind of some of the, has some of those events look and, and what's there, uh, it's a great video to check out. And you can find it over on our site. It was a fun fest. I, I got to say the, uh, the organizers did a good job. Um, you know, hopefully next year we can uh, increase the exposure a little further, even yeah, and yeah. Uh, get a, even more people. Absolutely. There. All right, Brian, well, you know, before we move on, uh, we've got to give a shout out to our buddies over at GoDaddy.com. Now, GoDaddy has been with say us. Say what now? Uh, for uh, I want to almost say two and a half years. I mean, it's crazy how long they've been supporting the Linux Action Show. They're committed to it. I've recently had a conversation with them, you know, and they love. Uh, helping sponsor the largest Linux podcast out there. They run all of their back-end infrastructure on Linux. Of course, they have some Windows Box to do for customers. They have a vested it. interest. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, GoDaddy continues to donate to open source projects, which is awesome of them. And so they've hooked us up. You probably already know it because it's the coolest promo code in town. If you use the promo code Linux when you check out at GoDaddy.com, you can save 10% off any order. That's or Linux and L-I-N-U-X. Right. All one word, you got all it. uppercase to keep things simple. But let's talk about our fancy. They've got Linux 20 and Linux 20, Linux 2.0 will save you 20% off shared hosting. And you know what? I've got four of those GoDaddy shared hosting boxes. It is awesome. They work great. And they've got the GoDaddy hosting connection, which has a bunch of stuff, WordPress, Drupal, yeah, yeah. Uh, IRC stuff, all basically click, 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 done with an entire review system all there. So that's Linux 20 when you check out to save 20% off shared hosting over at GoDaddy.com. You know, it's great. Uh, I, I love, I want to say big thanks to GoDaddy, but, uh, you know, really for, for shows like the Linux Action Show, I mean, there, there couldn't be a much better fit than, than like companies like GoDaddy and mm -hmm. us and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, what are we going to do? Like sponsor? Like we're not going to go out and advertise like McDonald's. Well, actually, maybe that might work. But, but you know what I'm saying. I here. do know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. we're not going to have, we're not going to get Visa. No, and, no, uh, we're trying, we're trying to be cool here. You'll notice there's not just like a crap ton of ads in your face. It's only stuff we actually think you guys would actually use. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. You got it. All right, Brian. Let's do the news. That's the problem with that news jingle. It's so awesome that when you don't get in the live show, you just jones for it, you know? Mm. Oh, yeah. I know all too well. All right, how's the chat room doing? Well, we're talking. I know. Yeah. Yeah? Are you guys doing good in Well, chat? we're mostly talking about Chris right now. Sell Girl Scout cookies. You know, actually, that's not a bad idea, Uwe Bowl. Total improv to go that ad. Yeah, forgot about that. <laughs> Sorry, GoDaddy. <coughs> what? Is Brian moving? Whoa! Whoa. Brian's quit screwing. Wait, 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 wait. I could almost do like an extreme close up. <laughs> Whoa! <Where? gasps> <laughs> That's good times, everybody. Whoa! <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. I am, um, you know what, Brian? I am ready whenever you are. Okay, what's new in the news this week? Not prepared, huh? Dang it. Interesting. Dang it. <laughs> Son of a gun. Yeah, let's bring it. All right, here we go. Let me get... Um, hey, Chris, what's new in the news this week? I'm trying to figure <laughs> out... Um, oh, that's, that's cool. Hey, everybody, Chris is ready when I am. This is what Chris... Chris just said that. Okay, here <laughs> we go. We are recording in three... Two. Two. Yeah. What's new in the news this week? Oh! All right, Brian. That was incredible. Our top story. No, on wait a second, Chris. That was incredible. You like that? Yeah, you you want to hear from the throat? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I really. 
I really didn't want to hear it from oh, the sorry, throat. Ryan, sorry. And I really want to know why you thought I would want to hear it. <laughs> and the, the billions of listeners around the world now heard that from the throat. Okay. Holy okay. Lord. So the top story on I thought you were sleepy, man. <laughs> Good Lord. I was. That's what you I, were bringing the power. Uh, you you see, got the I'm, power I'm bringing it up a notch. All right, Brian, the top story on our news docket for this week. <laughs> KDE 4.2.3 has been released. That's it? Just 4.2.3? No, like dot six dot eight dot two. Well, here's why Chris is um, telling this is the top story. Chris talked to some of the guys. Chris is me. And sometimes me refers to me in the third person. So, sometimes um, use does. Yeah. Do that to use. Yeah. Uh, some, whenever I refer to Chris, I refer to him in the plurals. I was talking to some guys at Linux Fest Northwest who work on the KDE project, and they said, Chris, KDE 4.2.3 is the KDE 4 right. version that we really think is the version where KDE 4 is for everyone. And right. we've heard that a few times, but they said, honestly, we mean it this time. They, 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 so, they really are saying, it seriously, this is the yeah, one that yeah. you're supposed to go and check out. And if it's not for you at this point, then KDE4 is just not for you. And there's been uh, there's been some improvements, of course, memory fixes, bug fixes, things like that. They've also uh, tweaked the UI in a couple spots with Plasma. But you know yep, what? Yep. It's, it's looking pretty good. It's, it, it's predominantly it's a, a bug fix release yep. uh, in comparison. And uh, honestly, from what I've seen so far, now I was running a 4.2.3 um, prior to release, kind of like a, a late beta-ish build of it. Um, and it was a lot more stable and, and generally working better yeah, than, uh, than 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 four point one or four point two. You know, were. it's looking good. It looks sharp. Uh, I like a lot they of things did a about nice it. Nice job. I um and and you are not predominantly KDE guys, but I went ahead and just you know what I was on the live stream the other day uh, and I thought, what the heck? I'm going to do just like a live KDE install. So I installed KDE four point two point three. Nice. Then started streaming my impressions. Um, I haven't posted that anywhere really except for over at youtubecom broadcasting because it's very, nice. very impromptu. But if you do want to see me kind of go through KDE four point two point three and see where I immediately run into problems, that's over at Jupiter Broadcasting. You know, were you running this on in, 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 in a virtual machine? I was. Now, yes. see, I, I've noticed. So, I've got a, a few uh, virtual box and VMware instances running uh, right. KDE, and I've had problems. Uh, right. Now, when I run on raw metal and on a well-supported graphics card, I have not had those really? problems. Really? Yeah. Now, see, no, I, I'm, see a, I'm a predominantly virtual machine guy. I problem, spent a lot of time my, in VMs. My issue wasn't so much with uh, the visual stuff. It was like. The way you work with widgets and things like that was my issue. Like the the UI to uh, resize widgets, or or how the panel you for like yeah. even the task manager is a widget, and so like yes. you can accidentally close your task manager, which I did twice, like just during a fifteen minute period. Yes. Until I found out later that you can lock widgets and then you don't have that problem. Right. But I didn't know that when I was doing it because I was pretty new to KDE, and that was a so KDE four is its own beast. I mean, if if you come from GNOME or even KDE three, when you hit KDE four, you just kind of stop and cock your your head a little bit and my, I think KDE4 is fantastic. I love KDE4. I'm a big fan of QT, which a KDE4 is built on. I think what they've done with KDE4 is great. I love the technological love direction the they've gone. the technology gone. behind it. I it's mean, it fantastic. really is. fantastic. I also am a huge fan of the design. And I've got to say this. I want to say this to all distros out there listening in. Um, if you are taking KDE4 and, and changing it, Changing the look and feel of it. Don't do that. Stop that because KDE4's default look and feel is some of the best stuff coming out of any operating system Agreement, sir. on the planet. I mean, now I mean let's let's be clear. Uh, Mac OS 10.5 and Windows 7 both look professional, right? I mean, I mean, let's let's give credit where credit's due. They both look professional. I think, they uh, both look clean. I think so. I think um, but, perhaps. Windows Seven more so, although well, it's I a little newer. I haven't seen much of yeah, Windows Seven. Yeah, yet, but, but but just the same. Those they both look professional, clean, and nice. However, I think that KDE four point two I agree. looks better. I agree considerably. And on top of that, when we were at Linux Fest, the guys there were saying they're coming out with a new theme. So they have I forget uh, crap. I know what it is too off the top of my head. I forget what the default uh, KDE. Um, um, no, no, no. It's um, um, guys in the chat room. What's the what's the KDE? KDE it's not arrow. Theme? It's um, but anyways, they're they're, they're it, it's, it's it's one letter off from arrow. They're coming out with a new theme <laughs> and they're calling it Air. I think Air or yeah, it's like Air. Yeah, because I was because the first thing I said, oh, that makes me think of Adobe Air, but no, it made me think of Arrow on the Windows. Yeah, side. they're coming yeah. out with a new theme and it's called Air, and it's out there now. You can go it grab it. It looks great. It's very cool. Yes. I, I, I've really got to give my hats off to these guys. You know, I'm, I'm kind of at this point where I've been almost 
too excited about KDE4 for a long time. I, well, that's my thing. Is I and want to switch. I really, I want to, really too. want to switch. But, but I, ha- I have and issues, dude. The, the, I have the issues. bugs I've been hitting yeah. with KDE4 have stopped me, and so I well, always well, have been going back to anymore. GNOME. Mine are not bugs anymore. Mine is just the UI design and layout. See, I don't mind the UI design and layout. It's just different. It, that's the whole thing for me is it's just different. For me, it's like the jump between you know okay using that. a Windows or a Mac box yeah. to GNOME. I think it's just that the UI is different. You handle the panels differently, and that's what's happening the plasmoids in KDE4. Are, the plasmoids are kind yeah. of a big thing for me to wrap my head around, but I think if I spent two weeks only running KDE 4.2.3 exclusively, I think I would have it down, especially now that I know you can lock those suckers into place. Now, here's, now here's something that, that's really I, I'm incredibly impressed with. Um, and and a bit torn on with KDE four. Um, they've gone already. They're already at that point where they almost have that thing that everyone's talking about about having that social networking desktop. You know where oh, where yeah. gnome gnome's been talking about that for a yeah, while yeah, yeah. And, and all yeah, these sorts of yeah, things. Yeah. But with the way they've got the plasmoids working on KDE four, and they've got the Twitter ones, yeah, and all got, these, yep. the Facebook yep, stuff, yep. and they look. Like, good. You know what they look they're like? They're missing some functionality, though. They're kind of basic right now, but, but they but look good. The thing is, they look great. They remind me a lot of iPhone applications where they, like, they'll have a Twitter one, and the Twitter one will look great, but it'll be fairly simple, just like an iPhone mm-hmm. app, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I feel like from, um, from, a, uh, from that social desktop perspective, yeah, KD4 is like already there yeah and, I mean, and yeah. no and no no miss is falling behind at least the at least the kubuntu version pre-shipped with the, the uh, twitter um uh, plasmoid preloaded so it was just like click click and then it's I've got great twitter thing the thing is for me is all those plasmoids that integrate into the desktop are near useless because i always almost have my desktop covered with a million windows yeah i'm, I'm kind of the same way see I, i'm more of a gnome do guy yeah. myself where i always have gnome do all up and running yeah but, uh, uh so anyways if uh if you want to try kde 4.2.3 you're not ready to make the switch well then i've got good news for you there is a uh a live cd with KDE 4.2.3 fully loaded up, the 64-bit versions and 32-bit yeah. versions. It's based on OpenSUSE 11.1, and it's KDE 4.2.3, and I will link to it in the show notes, or you just search for KDE 4 Live CD, and you should get it. It's a very simple home.kde.org domain. Yep. And it's uh, it's very cool. I did. This isn't the one I used. I loaded up Kubuntu because I was ready to go. I was going to make the switch, so I did the. Yeah. I hadn't loaded Ubuntu 904 yet. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go Kubuntu 904, and then. But yeah. anyways, if you want to, if you want to <laughs> kick oh. the tires, as it, as it were, Brian, then you can uh, find that in the show notes. I will have a link to that. Nice. Oh, nice. All right, Brian. The next story on our news docket. For this week, that's it. We got more stories. I mean, I mean, we. I thought that would be enough. No, I've got more stories. It for seems you. like the new KDE is enough for anyone. No, we should sir. just call it right there. I'm not going to stop, plenty. Brian. I refuse. I've got more news, and I'm going to give it to you right now. Chris, Chris, yeah, be careful. All right, you are in serious danger of too much of news? blowing people's minds <laughs> with your news. <laughs> All right, Brian. Well, this one may not blow anyone's mind, but it's kind of cool in my opinion. Novell releases. SUSE Linux Enterprise Desktop 11. Now, why is this cool? Well, honestly, because we've been it's talking about been SLED <laughs> since we started the show, so it's kind of a landmark thing just for the show in the yeah, sense that... It, yeah, SLED 10 was the big deal when uh, when Linux Action Show first started nearly three years ago. Um, so it, yeah, so yep. one, one here's, here's this. Uh, Linux Action Show is getting old. <laughs> and two, <laughs> uh, SLED 10, SUSE Linux Enterprise Desktop 10, is old. Right. Uh, if this this show is old, Sled Ten is old, no S terms. So uh, you know, this is this is pretty great. Um, it is of course based on OpenSUSE eleven dot one, I believe. Um, I think so. I, I was just looking through the show notes to find that. Uh, I'm, but pretty, I'm pretty sure it's basically it's never they took quite though, right? Because what they do is no. they take like yeah. the stability, the st- the, and then they, they take some of those like stuff from like the OpenSUSE version, just like the Fedora folks do with Enterprise one, and then they kind of uh, you know they make modifications to it and make some s- make some differences and, and pull out some of like the PAM ar- architecture and sure. replace it with the yeah. one from Sled and things like that. But yeah, it, essentially, I think it's based on OpenSUSE eleven point one. Yeah, and, they, and the, yeah, they add in a couple of apps and, and various other things. Yeah. I believe it even comes like preloaded with. Uh, uh, like Adobe Reader and all sorts of so stuff. So here's a few things. Uh, here's some highlights, and then I'm going to talk about where uh, SLED kind of stands out a little bit than, and then Red Hat Enterprise, but yeah. at the end of the day, there's not too much difference between the two. Uh, so SLED is, again, as an enterprise release. It's meant for IT departments to deploy to large range, ranges of workstations, people that want to have Linux on the desktop, but they don't want to have to change very often in the sense of like a right. six-month release cycle. 
So we're rocking uh, GNOME 2.24, and um, it also uh, they've taken that and then they've added the Pulse Sound audio backend. So you've got GNOME 2.4 with Pulse Audio, KDE 4.1.3, and Xorg 7.4. Now, I kind of wish that KDE was was updated a little bit further, but to be fair, they've got to go with whatever the latest stable tested yeah, exactly. version is that's for the their thing. for their enterprise customers. And in KDE terms, really, that should be the latest at this point. But for the rest of the packages, I kind of agree with with almost going like one or two notches. I'll be back. honest with you, and I might get a little bit of flack for this, but I think a lot of shops that are actually deploying a lot of sled are doing so in GNOME, and the I, reason GNOME, for that, GNOME is default. Yeah, and 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 if you use sled uh, SUS Linux Enterprise Desktop with Novell's ZenWorks package, yeah. you can deploy uh, GNOME policies that modify GComp remotely. Like, So you can have different workstations in different groups, and right. then you can configure the desktop restrictions and lock down remotely from one management console, much like uh, Microsoft's group policy tool that comes with Active Directory, which a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, and that's in a, in, a, in a lot of ways where... Uh, Using something like Sled instead of the open, the latest version of OpenSUSE is a difference. Like their Sled uh, has a built-in facilities for uh, network patch management and network policy management. They uh, have a little bit different of an right. update uh, back end to it. There is also a little more um, uh, work put into uh, RAID controller drivers and things like that for high-end workstations. They've done things like uh, enable uh, swap over NFS, so that way if you have some diskless workstations but you still don't have enough oh RAM. Yeah, yeah. So they've done a few things that aren't in like the default one that are more useful for like network deployments and things like that. So it's an interesting deal, and um, of course it also cl includes things like the group-wise clients and and uh, right, uh, right. some so pre-configured... To, to, like to, to work well within a Novell-powered exactly. business. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's really for a Novell shop that used to be maybe a, a netware, and now they've transitioned to... Something else, um, right? And now uh, they they even I, I believe in this version one of the major changes they're u they're using a different default file system now. I think the last one was all riser, and they've moved yeah. over to uh, ext3. Yeah, now. they have the ext3, and they're which including you know is is fine. I mean, it's not like it's a big deal one way or the other. Sure, to be sure. Honest, they have they have ext3, and they're including ext4 as an option if you want to do that. If you want all those um, problems. So um, yeah. what? What did I say? So it's so not yeah. all those problems. It's just that it's one, just that one, that problem. one nasty yeah. problem where it deletes your data. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they also include. You're right, Chris. Thanks for reeling me back off of that one because that whole stance of them deleting my data is just that's an extreme stance. One, for Brian to uh, take. one last um, thing about uh, slide that I'll just touch on is it includes something that's kind of new at this point, and it's called Puppet. And that uh, Puppet is like literally like pull the strings. It's for remote. Or even local automated management and administrative tasks. I like that. So yeah, very cool. I like cool. that a lot. Anyways, uh, you probably don't care too much other than the fact that a lot of these business, like the one we just reviewed before right. the show, these business workstations ship with this stuff. A lot of the Lenovo ThinkPads, that's what they use as sled. Right. So if you buy a Lenovo with Linux, that's what you're going to get. And realistically, even if you're buying a standalone license for, for sled 11, it's it's only 120 bucks. And I know that in Linux distro terms, that seems high, but you're getting, you know, Enterprise level support and additional applications and all sorts of stuff. So, so that is that is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Brian. I mean, it's not something that I'm going to put on my desktops at home. I'm going to run open SUSE if I'm going to go the SUSE route. Yeah, so just yeah, the yeah. same. Yeah, just the same. All right, Brian. So the next story on the news docket is kind of a follow up to last week's story, and that was that uh, Ubuntu 904 was released. And so now, you know, we've had a little time to look at Ubuntu 904. Yeah, it's, it's gestated on our machines a little bit, and we can see what and we're thinking. Uh, I've got to say, I'm a little disappointed in a few things. Um, that I don't know how many there's, uh, these are actually still issues, but I don't think it should have shipped with these things. These are issues that Ubuntu 904 shipped with out of the gate that I think it should never have shipped if these were problems. Uh, boot failures on Intel D945 motherboards. Uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. This is beyond ridiculous because the D945 motherboard is a very, very common OEM motherboard st stock part that a lot of people have. Uh, people that had uh, labels in their Etsy FS tab that upgraded uh, either were unable to mount the file system or lost yep. the labels. It was one or the other, which it, which blows my mind that that's even an issue. Um Home drive encryption was lost if you did an upgrade. If uh, you upgraded from 8.10, you may additionally get Lilo installed with Grub. Yeah, that that one, oh, that, that, that bit me on one of my VM machines. And uh, if you have network management in KDE, you have to reinstall it after the upgrade. Yep. If you have a Wacom tablet, X server crashes. Uh, if you have an HP Mini 1000 like the one I have sitting in front of me, your sound stops 
working. Kubuntu Network Management Applet does not connect to WPA2 networks, so you can't use WPA2 encryption with Kubuntu uh, and the network management applet that comes with that. And uh, there's just a few other things, like uh, if you use iSCSI, well, then you're boned. Uh, there's been a huge per- performance regression on Intel graphics cards. Huge. Now, this is not necessarily Ubuntu-related. It's an Xorg deal, but go freaking figure. But, but why, but why, the Intel why GMA they, uh, is now the number one graphics chip sold by manufacturers, and there is a huge performance yeah, regression. And here's, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. The the constant mantra over the last two to three years has been stop using AMD, NVIDIA, and ATI graphics cards because, oh, they aren't going to work that well. Use the Intel chips because it's all open source, so it's going to work well. Okay, now here we actually have open source uh, drivers for the likes of like the GMA 950s and 955s and all these sorts of things. And despite that, it is, as of right now, actually working worse in many cases than NVIDIA chips. So what the heck is going on? I know. I mean, what the heck is going on? Like, this is this is stand up on top of the table in a crowded lunchroom and say, what the hell is going on? Uh, yep. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So There's I've got this so this little netbook I've got sitting in front of me. HP sells these things preloaded with Linux now, right? You can get their mobile yeah, yeah. internet experience right. on this thing. Right. It's based on a version of like Ubuntu 804 or something like that. Now, they have to be based on Ubuntu 804 or 810 because the latest and greatest Ubuntu doesn't work on hardware that it previously supported, yeah, despite the fact that it's brand new hardware. They really, 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 to an extreme and almost un... un uh, I am running out of adjectives <laughs> other than really I can use here, but they screwed the pooch big time. And, and some and of it, though, isn't their fault. I mean, they, they, that's the packages they have to ship with. No, no, no. And there it's are some updates, like I believe the, the to Intel update those packages. I know. So I know. it is absolutely their fault. That's true. If, but I believe like uh, the Intel GMA performance issue may have been fixed with an update. Um, there's other things that aren't their fault, but are just ridiculous, like the EXT4 yeah. data loss problem. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that one's not really their fault. I mean, EXT4 is not default on 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 Ubuntu anyway. It's no EXT3. exactly. So but, I mean, I mean that that's but that is okay. an issue that shipped with it, but they, there's nothing they can do about it. Like now, here's right. one though. Wubi is the one that lets you install Ubuntu from within uh, Windows. And then, you know, you can try it out, and it's like it's just a program you add and remove from Windows. Yeah. Uh, Wubi uh, will reuse in a pre-existing Ubuntu folder to install into if you have it instead of just creating a new one. Like, so if you wanted to have – so, like, you know, if you install the program and it'll just overwrite its original directory instead of creating an, another directory, like it, like sometimes yeah. that'll happen with Windows. Well, that's yeah. what they did with Wubi, but that's not the intended – behavior and it just overwrites the old installation and if you uninstall it it'll delete the old installation yep. so like if you want to try out 904 and then say ah, i want to go back to my 810 well guess what it's gone it's gone so now now that said i am actually pretty happy with the Ubuntu 904 yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, now right. they, they they really have things that they really screwed up on i'm finding ubuntu 8.10 is a better more solid and more interesting distrib- uh, yeah. release. Uh, but some of the things in Ubuntu 904 are nice. They made some nice changes to the visual components. Uh, there are some distinct speed ups in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the mm-hmm. packages they updated, are r- I'm really happy they updated. But just the same. Come on, guys. Yeah, I agree. They, you know, we know what they need to do. They need What's to sit down and watch my Linux sucks video, and then they need to just give me a call. I will walk them through this. Oh. Is that what you're going to do, Brian? I'll just walk them through. Well, this. they should have just called you before they even just decided to do anything, right? Because without <laughs> without talking to Brian of the Linux Action Show, how could they have even made any kind of decision? You know, <laughs> part of me wants to wants to slap you upside the head for being so snarky at me. The other part of you wants to just agree, like, yeah, that is a really good idea. Right? Why didn't they call me before doing anything? <laughs> All huh. right. Yeah, let's move on. All right. So we've got two more stories in the news docket, and I'm excited about both of them quite a bit. So let's uh, let's get to those. All right. So the next story on the news docket for this week, Brian. Oh yeah. Is XBMC version? Uh, I think nine. I think they nine. just call it Babylon. I think I don't think it actually has a version number. Oh okay. Uh, I was gonna give it the version number, but I I think it doesn't actually have a version number. Anyways, the latest version of XBMC. Which that website there says it does. Well, it says XBMC 904, but I think that might be like a prepackaged version that comes oh, I with. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so uh, it uh, maybe it is version 904. That'd be really uh, kind of silly if it's using the same exact version as Ubuntu. But hey, why not? It's the date. If you are not using uh, XBMC and you want media playback on your TV and, and live TV capture isn't necessarily your gig, and you're not using XBMC, why? XBMC is tight. It is awesome, right? So, okay, so check it, it out. It looks gorgeous. 
new new versions for every platform they they support, which is uh, like everything and uh, yeah. everything, which is great. And it uh, it includes now NVIDIA GPU hardware accelerated video decoding for Linux. If your uh, NVIDIA card has the uh, support for that, which yep. a lot of anything like I think eight series and beyond does, right. so you can get HD for you can get those cards cheap too. Yeah, and you can get HD decoding through your video card now, which means a little less processor usage, which is nice. They've also updated uh, the uh, codecs, of course, new karaoke features, if maybe uh, you like to do karaoke oh, or good. you have a lady that does. Good, like but karaoke. here's one that's really cool, is they have a <laughs> media info scraper, and that's the thing where it like, analyzes a media file and then can figure yes. out like if there's things that can go get online, like uh, like if it's a TV episode, get the TV information, its episode number, its original air date, if it's a movie, go get its IMDb information. It's very cool. They also have a built-in back-end for fan art, so like if it's a if it's a movie or an episode that doesn't have a very good poster online, there's a site where people will submit them, and if it That's goes cool. and gets the right information off your file, you can go get that fan art, which is generally very very high quality stuff. They've included a whole new improved skinning framework, and there are some amazing skins that radically change the look of XBMC. It like really does way more than you'd actually ever expect. Like very cool with OpenGL accelerations and all kinds of very neat stuff. It is incredibly impressive, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, it's very easy to use. So the spouse approval factor, even if they're not very geeky yeah it's still very high which is excellent for a lot of us and it's it's just a solid piece of software gpl based it is named xbmc it used to be the xbox media center but now it runs on everything right. it was big on hacked xbox yeah exactly it, and uh, but they realized that was kind of a dying platform so if you've got a mac you've got linux you got windows power yeah. pc intel it doesn't matter it do not matter there's also live cds all that stuff we will link that up in the show notes you've got to check out xbox media center if you really ain't rocking cool. that yet Really, really cool. It amazes me how much is happening on the uh, on the media center ish front that does not involve Myth TV. I know, right? Where's Myth TV gone? Jeez, it's just like they up and disappeared. I mean, we've got Xbox Media Center or XBMC. If sorry, that's what they call it now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's Elisa. Boxy. Boxy. I mean, there's just there's and there's a bunch of other ones too that are, I'm just losing, slipping right now. But but uh, there's a bunch, and I'm just not hearing anything on the Myth TV. You, but and I they were you. the king. I mean, when when we started the show only three years ago, I mean, we were putting together, you know, TVs, you know, using, you know, Myth TV, and we were excited. Yeah. Because it was cool. Yep. And now, man, the leaps and bounds that these projects have made is just phenomenal. Yeah. I know. I know. It's, uh, uh, what's going on there, Myth TV? Come on. All right. So the next, I, I lied a little bit. I actually have three stories left. <laughs> I'm going to rock it some more, Brian. Here we go. The next story on the news docket for this week. Mandriva 2009 spring release is out. This oh is the 2009.1 yeah. release. Right. Now, uh, Mandriva is not one we talk about a lot, but I, uh, I think a lot of people listening and uh, myself, big Mandriva or Mandrake user back in the Dizzle. So it's always <laughs> cool when they have a release. Yeah, I really haven't used them much since they know. changed. The same. So this version, of course, is rocking all of the latest stuff, with the exception of KDE three dot or uh, KDE four dot two three. Let's just come out. But anyways, uh, kernel two dot six two nine xorg seven four KDE four dot two two gnome two six six yep. xfc four dot six Mozilla Firefox three OpenOffice three yep. Qt Creator one uh, yada 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 on and on. Also includes. Wait, um, they listed Qt Creator in there? Yeah, they did. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, uh, you can uh, you can get KDE three still with Mandriva from their contributions repository, but it's not in the main distribution anymore. Good. Very good. Well, I don't know. There's a lot of people that still really it's like It's time. I it's don't know. Uh, I don't know if I agree you with You have that. to, uh, in, the, in the parlance of our times, poop or get off the pot. I don't know, dude. I don't know if it's time to get off the pot yet. They can use an old version of friggin' Mandriva for a while if they want to run the old stuff. Come Disagreement. On. KDE 3 has been around for, like, what, a million years? And it looks like it. I mean, KDE 3 is great. I mean, that's what, when I started playing with Linux. That's what I was playing mm, with, with. I guess with you're KDE. wrong. So I guess you're wrong. So. Oh, you just have a... <laughs> I All right. actually got nothing. So they've got they've got Im they've got improved boot times, uh, which is a very popular thing to do. They've got a few of their new. Uh, you know how like OpenSUSE has the um, the Yast uh, management thing to to manage your system, si, and graphical stuff, and things like that. Well, uh, Mandrake has their uh, their Drax, yep. and uh, they've got a new Drac auth, which uh, helps you connect your login to Mandriva from either an LDAP box or a Windows domain using Winbind. Oh. So if you're at you know a work where they're either using LDAP or, or Active Directory, you can actually um, connect to those two different services and get your login from that, which is very cool. So you only have to change your password once 
and then you know your workstation gets it and the other machines on your network will get it that's very cool they've also got um, a lot of new uh, improvements to their overall management console they've included extended 4 support which a lot of distributions are again this m is not shipping with uh, ext4 by default but it is available for those who would like it ext3 is currently the default yep. An another transition from Riser FS. This happened a little while ago with, with uh, Mandriva, but it's I would like to make though. a quick apology here. I am being chastised in the chat room currently because uh, Mike is pointing out that he has very nice looking desktops running on KDE 3.5.10. Oh, I thought Mike was going to And yes, you. yes, your desktops do look very, very nice and modern. My apologies. Still, you need to upgrade to KDE 4. All right, you were saying, Chris? I thought you were going to get schooled from Mike. I yeah, had a I got schooled a little uh -huh. bit. And you know, what's the, you know what the thing is? Uh, hey, Mike is kind of like the canary in the coal mines for when I screw up. <laughs> I figure if Mike chastises me, that means I'm going to get a flood of emails that are going to be angry unless I apologize. Although that metaphor means that Mike dies. Yes, yeah, sorry, Mike. We just sacrificed you uh, on the altar of KDA three. All you right. were saying? Okay, so the next story on the news docket for this week, or well, okay, that kind of works. Uh, Open Office three dot one is coming out soon, Brian. And yep. uh, w if everything goes on target, it's like sixty days away, and it's got a, a thousand fixes. A thousand? A thousand fixes. That's just is a what number you just pulled out of your butt, or is that their actual thing? That's what they say. Uh, one of them, though, for uh, I'm, I'm including improvements and fixes in one. Yeah, I don't know about that. It's like it's like your manager comes up to you, say, like, how many fixes did you make? A thousand of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things, one of the new features is they've worked a lot on their yeah. Anti Katie, Open Office three point one is actually out. They've uh, it's it, out already. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I guess this article must be old. Old article. <laughs> um. <laughs> well. <gasps> Oh, Chris. Hey, Chris. How, hey, Chris of the Linux Action Show. How you doing over That's there? That's what I get for recording this show in the f past future. The past. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, hey, you remember that time when we were doing the Kindle review and you didn't know it ran Linux? No, and dude. We, we were like 10 minutes into that review and, uh, and, you're, and you were like, and you started talking. You're like, you know, the thing that Linux users like about this is all this, this, and this, and this. And I'm like, yeah. And also, it runs Linux. And you just kind of looked at me and went, No, dude. Really? No. So that isn't actually what got released. So a lot of people that watched the Kindle review didn't see no, that. No, but, but that's that video is still up there. That's our that's our little preview video. Yeah, I know. Well, no, what happened was is <laughs> what I said is I said I kind of made a joke like we're reviewing this for the Linux Action Show, but it's not related to Linux at uh -huh. all. And you looked at me like at first like you thought I was just making a joke. Yeah. And then I'm I like, you were. And then I made some other comment about like. Well, and so why do Linux users care about this? And then what I was going to say was because the Kindle could read DRM-free text files that you could just drag onto it. And you're like, sure. Because it runs Linux. And I'm like, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but I know better now. The runs Linux guy knows better now. Oh, the runs Linux guy All right, can I get back better. to open, open Office 3.1? Is hey, that what we're hey, talking Brian, about? Hey, Brian, by the way, Open Office 3.1 is All right, out. talk about anti-aliasing in Open Office 3.1. Well, they include anti-aliasing now in the drawings, which really helps because... It, it, it is much, much better. It's not great, but it is right. much better. Uh, they've got a little better visual now when you're dragging. Uh, but the other things that's really cool about OpenOffice 3.1 is their overall improvements across the board. You have improvements in OpenOffice Writer, in Draw, in Calc. There's, it's not just like one particular application. Wait a minute, Chris. I need you to stop for a second. You know what we missed? Hmm. The Kindle DX. Well, is there anything we should talk about? Well, we how should about, say it's out. How about we make that a news story in a minute? That's a really good point, Chris. Yeah, I mean, man, you really know your stuff. You know how for doing we could have, you know thing. how we could have just slipped it Seamless in. Seamless transition. Hey, Chris, wait a minute. Go ahead and talk about Open Office for a little bit. Oh, now if I would have scrolled down to the bottom of this news story, I would have seen that it's out. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, yes. Okay, well, so anyways, just lots Good of times. features, and uh, if you're... It actually, it looks like a pretty good update. Uh, mostly the, the drawing and rendering stuff is, is kind of the biggest one for me of, of the bunch. The news article I'm going to link to in the show notes has downloads for your platform of choice right in it, so if you want to get this before your distro even makes packages available, you can do that from the show notes. All right, Absolutely. so the second to last story is kind of an interesting one. It's just something I'm going to touch on really briefly because I think it's kind of a trendsetter for uh, open source um, donations. Yeah. And that is uh, Miro uh, has announced their adopt a line of code fundraiser, I guess. No, it, yeah, it, it's their way of doing donations. So basically you donate uh, a set number of, of dollars, so four bucks right. a month or whatever, and you get one line of code. Yeah. Now, obviously, and they, and they give you the line number and what that line of code has. Now, obviously, it. though, that's kind of ridiculous because the line, the, what that line of code is, is going to be on a different number in almost every check-in. 
So obviously <laughs> that's going to be in a constant change. It's Perfect. more of a it's more of a gimmicky thing. So when you first do it, you're going to get the line of code and the number at the moment that you <laughs> you did your right. your your donation. Um, now I think it's a cute idea though, in a sense to raise money. No, it's a great idea. I mean, it's just it's just a gimmicky thing, but it's a cute one, and I love it. And I I really hope. Uh, that more more places do things like this. Now, Gnome is doing something similar. Yeah, I was just looking uh, that up. They're not doing their line of code thing. They've got their more like... Adopt a, adopt coder. a coder. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, they've kind of... The way it's... I don't know. I The way it's written, I'm a little concerned about, but it basically says, you know, they're doing they're doing t- tight on money and they need that. They need people to, to throw them a bone. And they, they really do. Yeah, so uh, anyways, check that out if you're if you're a big Gnome user, you might want to throw them some money. But now, Brian, you were saying something about an Amazon Kindle being released. Oh, yeah, the Kindle DX came out. Uh, yeah, so Amazon came out with their uh, their new little bit bigger Kindle, basically. So, you know, the Kindle 2 came out, and that was cool, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I liked it. But uh, then the uh, uh, the Kindle DX is basically the, um, the textbook and newspaper version of the Kindle. It's basically what it is. And that's the whole long and short yeah, of it. Yeah, it's much wider point. screen. Is it's, it's a bigger device. It's more custom sized and, for, for and, those sorts of things. And really, the reason why that matters is it is a Linux-powered device, and it is a very cool device. I've You know, I was a skeptic until we got one for review, and now I just think yeah. they're the coolest thing ever. I, if, I love the Kindle. If you get I have a seri- the first version of it at home, and do you? I love it. Well, you're so fancy. Yeah. If, uh, if you want to get your awesome on... Um, Amazon gives us like pretty decent referral rates. Like I almost want to say like ten to twenty percent. If you buy a Kindle, I don't think we have any in our store, but it, you can hit me up. If you yeah, hit you me up on email or we'll Twitter. We'll get you a link. And also, if you go if you go into our store and then like just start browsing from there and then go to the Kindle yep. and then buy it, we still yeah. get the we still if get the thing for it. They're doing it. Yeah, they're doing a thing where if we sell a Kindle, we that's where we're, we'll get some serious money. And plus, it doesn't yeah. cost you anymore. You get a Kindle. <laughs> so yeah. if you want to yeah. do that, that's one that's one option. For and you. then we will give you a high five. Yeah, I like high fives. Hey, Brian, give me a high five right now. Nice. Nice. All right, everybody. Oh, that's cool. They saw our arms go up, and our arms just went into each other, but yeah. they didn't actually get to see the high five. All right, Brian. That's all the news for this week. I didn't say anything. I just was quiet about the, that. Uh, the HV20 just died. Let me go get that battery. I mean, let me go get the plug, because we had to run on battery. All right. Chris is going to go get that battery. How you doing, B? Oh, I'm doing great, Chris. I think he's on crack right now. Hey, we got cheese dip. It's good. You want some cheese dip? Yeah, I do. Could you have some cheese dip? I'm going to hop up for a second, guys, and grab some cheese dip. Uh, we're going to take some calls next. So uh, fire up your Skype, right? Is that what we're doing? I think. I got to get Skype going. I don't have, I mean, I don't have the audio. We're, we're we're gonna we're gonna get that set up here in a second though, uh, but but get it ready before before we start doing the the calls. Think about what it is you're gonna want to call in about, and uh, get Skype going. Do a Skype call test, and before you call in, um, or when you call in, turn down the audio on the stream, or just oh, yeah. mute mute the audio on the stream. Make sure uh, that uh, it's working inside of Skype. So do the Skype call test with that fancy British lady that likes to talk to you and says hello. Welcome to Skype Call Testing Service, which I have to listen to like forever. But uh, the Skype is just Linux Action Show, all one word, all lowercase is fine. And uh, get that set up and ready to rock. And we will be uh, online with Skype uh, momentarily. I'm going to go in the kitchen and grab some cheese dip. Yeah. And uh, Chris is going to be running some wires. He's going to be wandering around here for just a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Uh, but definitely get ready to call in. Um, and, uh, yeah, ask us whatever you want to ask us. If you want to talk about the Linux suck stuff, call in and talk about the Linux suck stuff. You think, uh, you think I'm wrong? You think I'm right? Uh, you think I'm right, but I'm going about it wrong? You think I'm wrong, but I'm going about it right? I don't care. I, don't, I think that's possible, You're right? You're freaking me out right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I know. We're going we're gonna to blow a lot of minds uh, this, uh, this fine day. No, I'm just going to and uh, uh, yeah, you know, we can talk about that. You got general Linux questions. You got news you want to uh, bring to our attention. Um, you know, is it, uh, is it your dog's birthday? You know, we'll talk about that too. In fact, that's the only personal thing we're actually going to talk about. If it is your dog's birthday today, you can call in. Um, but I'm going to go get some cheese dip, everybody. And, uh, and, uh, and then we'll be rocking out. I do not know if Chris has a cable long enough to pull this off. 
I mean, I, I have a cable extender, but it's like super long. So we'll have to just play with this. It's going to take a little bit of troubleshooting. Sounds good. Sounds good, Kid. Yeah. Surprisingly good. You think it's just because we had a beer? Could have been the beer. It could have been, because it's good. Yeah, you smell like chips. You don't treat yourself? No. Oh. Uh, in terms of the amount of questions we'll take, um, basically we'll just take them. Um, the length. Yeah, I mean, it's going to go roughly X number of longs. And then, um, <laughs> if, if there's like... Honestly, if you guys, <clears throat> if you guys are calling in with twenty back-to-back -back amazing, gripping, intelligent, insightful, and <laughs> exciting questions, uh, we will take twenty of them. If you guys only have one and it's kind of boring, we're probably gonna call it right there. Hmm. I'm not hearing a ton of machine noise. Really weird. Hey, hey, why don't you fix that? Fix that. Oh, I'm on. sorry. We are done professionally. We are done. That's it. I'm doing my own show. <laughs> I'm doing the Chris Linux action show. Yeah. I'm just gonna take. I'm just gonna call mine the Brian action show. It's just gonna be about me. What speakers did those just come out of? I think they came out of your MacBook. <laughs> How's that working? Oh, Chris. Technological problems. Hello. Nothing works like it's supposed to. Oh, I was <laughs> 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 that's, that's a pretty good way to go. That's pretty good. You should make sure you change your, your audio settings there. I think Chris is getting this figured out here. Hey guys, yeah, Chris has a MacBook over there. Um, well, Chris does uh, does IT work for his day to day job, and uh, it kind of makes sense to have a MacBook Pro for his day to day job because he has he has a MacBook Pro that means he can run OS ten apps, and then he can have VMware on it so he can do Linux and Windows apps, and he can do them all in the same box. Whereas if he has a PC laptop, whether it's running Windows or Linux as the Play host. Hello, Skype call testing lady. My hey. name is Chris. Skype's got a little bit of buzz today, but it's not terrible. Uh, I've uh, I've seen I've seen worse uh, with my ears. My ears have seen worse. Hello, Skype call testing lady. My name is go. Chris. How are you going through the? Uh... No, um, you are not going through the right thing. You need to go to the right thing. Oh, yeah, there you go. That'll do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't run OS X on a PC laptop, really. You can you can illegally run uh, really hacked versions of OS X on My, the VMware, um, but it runs really slow. There's not really great network connectivity, and, and you can't really do it. So if you have to support an OS X client, you have to have an actual physical hardware Mac somewhere. Uh, my company is all Apple products based. Yeah, so you're 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 stuck. It is a, uh, it is a company laptop that was bought for me. Sure. And all everyone in the company has one. Yeah, it it kind of makes sense. I mean, I'm not a big Apple fanboy, but the re as you guys probably noticed, but the reality is, I mean, if you've got to support a Mac, you need a Mac piece of hardware. Uh, it's it's. Yeah, like if you want to support a Windows, like I can get by with just Windows only in VMwares and that as a VMware guest, and that's it, and that'll work fine. But it doesn't really work that way for the Mac, and it's mostly because Mac is very locked down in that way. The 
person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Please leave a message. <laughs> That's Skype call testing. Okay. <laughs> Skype call testing is currently unavailable, everybody. Can you guys hear that? That was pretty great. But at least it was still British. It was a different British lady, though. So yeah, I mean, I mean, if you think it, this is something we've complained about since day one of our show is that heck that we actually complained about this back when we did Cast a Blast uh, before the Linux Action Show started um, over three years ago is how we couldn't run uh, OS X in a virtual machine and how that locks you into having Mac hardware and makes it so you always have to have a Mac as your host and then you end up with you know Windows and Linux as your virtual machine guests. And, I mean, the way I do things has changed a lot, but. That's just because of what I can do for a living. Chris, on the other hand, really needs to have the ability to have OS X up and running for his work, so he has to have it. Kind of, right. it's, it's kind of limiting. Yeah, it works fine. Whatever. I don't actually care that much. Look at all those. Look at Look all those. Hey, all right. So we're going to get some good calls. I'm taking it, guys. Hey guys, it's Nick. I just wanted to uh, give you a heads up if you didn't know already. I'm pretty, pretty sure you already did, but uh, I went to um, iTunes and was like looking at um, the feed for the show and noticed that it was not having some problems. So I went to do through broadcasting only to find it down. Uh, how could you let it expire? That's just ha, ha, ha. That, that was fun. Anyway, yeah, that was good. Thanks, Duder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Luckily, we got that fixed. Uh, yeah, the Skype username is just Linux Action Show, all one word. All right, before we take a call, let's introduce the segment. All right. Uh, well, actually, we wanna, probably want to make sure somebody's going to call first. So, is anybody going to call in today, or what's our plan? Yeah, if you're going to if you're going to call in, say something in the in the, in the chat room real quick, um, and then uh, and then what we'll do is we'll start recording, we'll introduce the segment, and then we'll probably end up pausing it, and uh, and you'll call in, and then uh, we'll do one at a time. Sweet. All right, I think I think I think we're getting calls. I think we're going to get calls. Well, we've had a bunch of people add us. Yeah, I know. Like we've had like fifteen people add us, but nobody. You can go ahead and call in now. Whoever whoever first calls in will take. Um, yep. Is it on uh, channel five? It is on channel five. Okay. Looks like I, uh, we are offline. No, sir, we are totally online. Um, but you just need to make sure you add us as a as a daily walker. You could try calling anyways when it shows us offline. That's one of the things yeah. Skype does. Skype does. Skype Skype tweaks out every now and then. And welcome. That's what I'll say to you when you show up. I'll be like, and welcome. Go. Hey, what's up, Steve? Stan. Stan? Is that what we're calling you now? And we're hanging up on King Inuyasha. King Inuyasha, please check your Skype settings. Welcome to Skype. Hello, call Skype call service. testing lady. After the beep, it's so nice to hear her voice sometimes, you know. Your message will be hey, it's Mr. Pi. Mr. Pi, that's an awesome name. It's a great name. Thank you. Uh, I uh, would like to uh, talk Stan. about web security. <laughs> All right, let's talk about web security. What do you want to talk All about right, web well, security? Okay, Shoot. so I, I was on uh, the wonderful site I love to hate today called Facebook, and and one of my friends had posted a. a Sort of a key combination to activate an Easter egg. Uh, I like Easter eggs. What's wrong with that? Well, I'm uh, offended nothing. by Easter eggs. Uh, nothing about the particular Easter egg, so much as that I never explicitly sent any data. Uh, so it just made me think about the security of having multiple tabs open and in one tab doing something secure, such as banking, 
and in another tab having a website that possibly had security vu security vulnerabilities. Uh, and so I'm thinking of of finding a uh, a sandbox browser like Google Chrome, uh, except I need one for Linux. So Google Chrome is coming out for Linux. It's just not out yet. Yeah. Well, you need something now. Yeah. Well, you could always do something like App Armor. You know, yeah. you could do like a, an you app. can lock it down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Run like an App Armor profile, and then uh, and then uh, for that, wh uh, what what distribution? Ubuntu. Yeah, there you go. So App Armor's out for Ubuntu. Yeah, App Armor, and then you know, if you really want to make sure it, you know it doesn't oh. get outside of that, just have a uh, separate uh, um, you know a separate browser. You know, like like use a, a Epiphany or something like that, and just have that one uh, Epiphany dedicated sure, to that sure, one purpose. Or you can yeah. do multiple profiles in Firefox. Yeah, that'll that. work too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Chikui. All right, and that that opens up the line. The line is open. So I think people are really tripping out that we might not show up as online on Skype. That is. Explicitly common, very yeah, common. That's a common. So just go ahead and thing. call anyways. Make a hole with a through the name of the town in a dead dark globe. Who's chatting with you over there? What's going on, man? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Chris just squelched like a girl. I like this, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Oh, just so everyone knows, he's got to pee. That guy. That guy that's just <laughs> chatting with Chris really has to pee first. All right. So we oh, had, we had 15 of you add us to contact. but uh, All at once. Yeah. No one else is calling, so we're going to. Well, the, the, this we're, we're, we edit down this portion of it. Um, so uh, you know, if there's any any good calls that come in, we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll do the intro and uh, and uh, if we can get enough calls, we'll. If we'll you'd stick like to talk about the uh, uh, Linux sucks uh, presentation that Brian did, oh, yeah, feel free. Or if you want to comment on any of the news stories that we. You have know, covered. this is the problem I, I hit with doing. <coughs> Wow. Hi there. That was a fun thing Hi that just there. happened you, inside you, my body. How you doing, Chief? I think my body's going through changes, Chris. <laughs> um, well, with the coding with Brian thing, I, you know, basically, you know, um, once it gets going, it just yeah. goes yeah, and yeah. goes and people don't stop. Right, but for right. the first 10 minutes, I just sit there and talk. Stan got his audio fixed. Hey, Stan. Hey, how's though. it going? Brian, do you honestly think anything's going to happen in regards to the packaging situation on Linux? All right, let's take this one, Chris. You want to do that? Yeah, let's take this one. All right. All right hold, hold on a second and get ready to re-ask re -ask that question with just as much indignation as you asked it just there because that was great. Do you want me to intro or do you want to intro? Uh, I'll intro if you want. I think it's been a while that since we've done some uh, listener questions and feedback. Yeah, that's a feedback. good point, Brian. Uh, so uh, let's open up the lines right now, and uh, let's just start taking some questions let's and do hear it. what people have on their okay, minds. Okay, Brian. Well, we've got Bill on the line. Hey there, Bill. Hey, what's happening, Bill? Hello. All right, what can we do for you today? Hey, Brian, I saw your video about the about the Linux Silks presentation. Busted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one of those. Got one of those. Honestly, man, do you think they're ever going to fix the packaging situation? I agree with you about the packaging thing. I like the Windows side of packaging far more than I do the <laughs> Linux side. I mean, oh. it's a lot simpler, and I personally use NSIS versus, you know, using MSI or Inno or whatever because it's simpler. Sure. That's sure. how you roll. Yeah, that's just how you roll, man. All right. And on, Mac, and on OS X, it's even easier. You've got the DMGs. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got the DMGs, DMGs, which really just sounds like a rap group, but uh, that all by itself is awesome. Yeah, That's the, those are good points you've made. All right, well, w all right, we're gonna hang up on you so we clear up the buzz and the audio, but then we'll answer the question. Go, Brian. Um, yeah, of course we're gonna fix it. Of course we're gonna fix it. I mean, come on, look at where Linux was ten years ago. I mean, really. I mean, packaging wise, it's kind of where it is now. But but I mean, in 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 relation to all the other areas, we had. I mean, 3D acceleration? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry, but running a uh, GLX Gears demo that kind of worked on some machines, it doesn't count. You know, I mean, there was... 
the 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 desktop environments and the desktop managers were not really there for a lot of uses. KDE wasn't even really there, and that was kind of the first one to really be there in my mind. And uh, we've come such an incredibly long way that, of course, we're going to get there. It's just a matter of how quickly are we going to do it and who's going to be the one that does it. Because right now, we've got a situation where Ubuntu rules the world in you. terms of Linux, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you've got that situation going on and and they can sit down and, and really... if the Linux world does not standardize on certain things, such as packaging. Right. The rest of the distros that are not compatible with Ubuntu in terms of packaging are going to get left behind. Boned. Yeah, because it's a horrible place for them to be in, and and I, I really feel for them because there's there's like the Open SUSEs of the world. I love Open SUSE, mm-hmm. phenomenal distro, right. but they are in a horrible bind of a position where. As for independent developers, whether they be open source or proprietary, are sure. going to develop for Ubuntu sure. first. Yes. So, so do you really want to be known as the Linux distro that gets the second-hand crap? No, of it's course interesting. not. It's so, an, of course, it's going to it's get It's an fixed. interesting position for Ubuntu to be in, and it's also a bit disappointing they're not doing something more with it. I, I, it is disappointing, but just the same. I mean, it, it's... They don't want to step on anybody's toes and, and piss and anybody off. Yeah. Exactly. No matter how you go about it, they're going to piss I somebody gotcha. off and they're going to make waves. But uh, I think if managed properly, they can do it right. Now, Linspire or Lindos or, you know, or now Xandros or right. whatever you yeah. want to call them. They, have their they, click they and run. tried to tackle this with, with click and run, right? Well, they... They, they did it in the wrong they way. They farted on the execution, they, and they, they ruffled the community's feathers. And they, they marketed it weird, yeah. and they did everything basically they could to to do it wrong. And um, and I think you know if if you get it if you do it right with the power of Canonical and Ubuntu behind you, um, I, right. I I think it could go very well for the other distributions. Um, and really, I think it's in the best interest of Fedora, OpenSUSE, Gentoo, etc., to come together and say yes, this well, is something that's important. I don't to us. know. I mean, some of the distributions what makes them unique is their packaging, but then there's other distributions. I would say Fedora, OpenSUSE that probably should just standardize. I, I, I think they should. I realize Fedora loves Yum. And, no, uh, I and think, you know, I think the w- the one distribution I really think needs to standardize is OpenSUSE because Fedora is known as the breeding ground of new technology for Red Hat's enterprise yeah. systems. And yeah. they don't care about the desktop. Red Hat has already said, well, I mean, there's screw people the working desktop. on it that care about it. All right, hold, hold on a All second. Right. Hold on a second. We've got our next call. I, I want to I get to this. Let, let, let that color ring for a second. All right. Uh, you can answer it if you want. But, um, All right. I'll but, answer So it. just the same. If, 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 Fedora wants to stick to RPM, fine. But OpenSUSE, they're all about the business desktop for SLED, and then they're about the breeding grounds for that with OpenSUSE. And they've done remarkable work in pushing forward a lot of technology. So I, I, I would like to see a better integration okay, with, okay. with OpenSUSE and I Ubuntu so. yeah. uh, going forward. I hear you. So, I, I, yes, it's going to happen. Of course it's going to happen. It's all a matter of if it takes us too long, we get a black eye because of it. Yeah, I agree. All right. Hello? Hey, Hi. how you doing, man? What can we do for you? I got a question for you is, how are corporations or small businesses supposed to choose a distribution when there's so many to choose from and, you know, you have the packaging and applications? How are they supposed to choose what's right All for right. them? All right, stand by. We're going right, to re-roll, let's take this one. And, we'll, and then we'll ask you the question, and then you just kind of pretend like we didn't just have that question. All Here right. we go in three, two. All right, Brian, we've got our next caller Oh, I hit play, not record. <laughs> ha right. ha! That's All right, hold on just does. a second here. Chris is going to reset <laughs> the queue there. And you ready? All right, Brian, we got our next caller on the line. Hello, sir. What is your name and what is your question? The name is Christopher. Nice, great name. Thank you. All yes. right, so what do you want to ask us? So I was wondering, is how are corporations or small businesses supposed to choose a Linux distribution for themselves when you have... So many right. different distributions yep. out there. I hear you. And there's, you know, got Red Hat or SUSE, mm-hmm. or then you have things like Fedora and Ubuntu. Then, yeah. you know, how are they going to adopt, train people, pick the applications, handle client and server? I hear you. Yeah. Well, I got a few. I got a few ideas on that. I think. I mean, really, if depending on your size, your corporation, and your corporate standards, there's only really a couple, right? There's. Uh, there's Red Hat Enterprise and there's SLED, depending on what you need. Like if you need the centralized patch management and the centralized policy management and things yeah, like that. Yeah. And then, you know, there's things like Ubuntu long-term support and there's, uh, like you mentioned, OpenSUSE and Fedora. I think those would be probably more appropriate in smaller corporations. 
I think what the best way that a corporation should pick their distribution is it should come within IT, and that IT department should be tasked with selecting the best desktop distribution that is appropriate for them, and they should create a proposal and sell it to management, and then management should defer to their decision. And those cr those dis the things that IT people should be looking at is their requirements. How big are they? Do they need to be able to standardize uh, on a single platform that's going to last for three years, or can can they come up right. with a method to maintain a maybe every six month, or maybe they use every year, maybe every long term support of Ubuntu? So it's it's something that I think that that's how corporations decide. Mm -hmm. People that are uneducated, uh, um, well, they're, they're never going to make the right decision. And that the, no, the yeah. decision they're going to make is going to be <laughs> Windows, and that's just kind of where we're at right now. Now, now, just the same though, I think I think you're right. It needs to come from within IT. It needs to be submitted as a proposal from IT, and. All things being equal, I think the IT people should go with what they know the best and what they'd be the most comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, because that's what they're going to support. Other, the best. Otherwise, otherwise they're just going to get frustrated all the time. Yeah, so, yeah, like you know, if they're if they're if they're red hat people and they like dealing with yum, then that's what they should propose. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, thanks, Christopher. Was there anything else? Well, what about like, have you ever had experience trying to migrate users though from Windows to Linux desktops? Yeah, yeah. How did you How'd you go about trying well, to do so that? Well, so the first thing to do is uh, to keep them what they're comfortable with and make small changes. Uh, like, for example, if they're using Internet Explorer, get them on Firefox. If they're using mm. o if they're using Office, get them on OpenOffice. For Messenger, get them on Pigeon. Get them on anything where there is a Windows version of yep. the application they'll be yep. using on the Linux desktop. Change the way things work a little bit. Like, get the get your data structures right beforehand. Like, if they're gonna, if they're going to be if you're going to change w the way they're going to store files on the network, try to introduce that new concept while they're still in their familiar environment. So a lot of all those kinds of things that you can do if beforehand, do that. Then when it comes time for the U why you have to make that change and, and for some places it's better just to cut and then and then and then deal with the triage yeah. and in other places yeah. it's better to phase and then always include like a cheat sheet like if a department always works on this particular thing in windows have a little document printed up with some screenshots and just a boom 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 yeah. like a five line brief how to do this kind of how to question and answer thing but totally the, the thing that works the best is if you transition them to everything you can uh, while they're still in their familiar environment and you know uh, uh, uh one of one of our forum listeners uh who goes by the name of bear in the forums uh we got to meet him up at linux fest northwest and one of the things he was doing with his in his environment was he was doing that and he actually went a step further to replace all the icons on a windows desktop with one of the free icon packs that are available like on gnome looks oh, and whatnot idea. and that way one day they'll just come into the office they'll be running linux and it'll be the, the same, icons. same icons that's a great idea the same names the same apps everything is the same the only difference is maybe the location of the, and of the it's button funny that starts too, it because all. um you know uh the icons people get really screwed up when their icons change i mean the name yeah, might be sure. it might still be firefox but if it's firefox with a blue earth instead of firefox with the planet with the fire around the bottom it screws oh, up. throws everyone off yeah yeah for yeah. sure now what about having a mixed distribution in your corporation having like red hat as your server, but doing Ubuntu on clients, would that be too much of a nightmare trying to handle both of those? You know, I've done that, and it's, it's for me it was fine uh, because uh, I, I had, you know, a, a set amount of servers and a set yeah. amount of desktops, and I would just create different procedures and whatnot for the different um, platforms. It is nice if they're all one yeah. uh, because that means, you know, when there's a security error in uh, glibc, that's the same update you apply everywhere. I mean, right. It's, and it, it affects SSH. everybody the same. Yeah, exactly. So there's some niceties there. Then again, uh, the argument could be made there's also some niceties security-wise in having diversity. So there's pros and cons. It but is true, yeah. I think, you know, if you, can, if you can get away with one distro, that's the way to go. But uh, you'd have to ask yourself, you know uh, how much additional work that's going to be for you, and and w and what the value is. I mean, if if you want to use Ubuntu on the desktop, is there a reason you can't use Ubuntu on the server or Red Hat on the right. desktop? Right, right. And and the same goes if you're having a predominantly Linux-based organization with both clients and servers. You know, are you going to be having like um, um, your own custom repository set up, or you're going to be pushing out? You know, you know whether it's commercial applications or custom s versions of the the repo. If that's the case, it's actually a little easier to build a repo for a distro on itself than it is to say build a you know an apt repository under Fedora. It's yeah, just I mean, you a, can it's host it on Fedora, but you it can is. host it, but but it's just easier to automate everything if you keep everything similar yeah. from end to end. Yeah. Not necessarily the same version, but the same distro within right. a few versions. Right. Yeah. Mm. So, cool. what uh, distro would you choose for a mixed uh, client server small business? Well, for the desktop, you know, one of the things you're always going to want is fairly fresh packages. Yeah. And that is one <coughs> of the downsides to Sled, although they have just Rev, so that might be something to look at. But yeah. uh, I always find that uh, I, I end up within about a year with the desktops. 
Uh, I, I I tend to need something that's either new in open office or new in, in other, some other aspect. And yeah. and a custom rolling all of that stuff gets to be a management nightmare, and that's where you just want to go to the repo. So I would probably seriously consider Ubuntu long ter- long term yeah. support or uh, one of the enterprise distributions. I, I would consider either uh, uh, I w- I would seriously consider Ubuntu long term support and turn off the updates. <laughs> um, and just manage it yourself. That's that's what I would personally. Or or, or you know maybe not turn maybe them off, block the but then use your own repo and only put the updates that you have Want determined. There, yeah. Right. Which yeah. of course right. then if that's the case, it's easier to again host the repo yourself to to mirror it on an right. Ubuntu server. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Huh. There you have it. Well, thank you guys. Hey, yeah. no problem, man. Thanks for calling, it, buddy. Mm-hmm. All right. Nice. All right, the lines are back open. Hey, we're getting more people uh, saying hello. I like it when people say hello. I know, huh? Hey, these have been these have been decent questions so far. Even even from Stan Bill Ted. <laughs> Let's uh, let me play a voicemail here. Unmute it. I want to hear this voicemail. You got it. Grand Central. Ryan and Chris, it seems as though that on the Watch Us Live portion of your website, you used to creating a program called a Rapid Weaver, which is for the Mac. Right, I thought you guy. guys were Linux people. Why would you use such a crappy? That's so funny. He came into. He's program. from Bothell too. That's interesting. Such a rapid oh user. no, Beverly. Thanks. Well, Aaron, I'm not going to play your voicemail because you, you and I have already talked. Actually, I've I've talked a fair bit with the guy who developed Rapid Weaver. Have you? Yeah. Oh well, it's actually it wasn't actually used in Rapid Weaver, but the template is from Rapid Weaver. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's what's uh what's the dude's name that uh, developed Rapid Weaver? Oh, I can't remember his name actually off the top of my head. It's it's a very 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 small company. It's basically just a tiny little shareware shop. Yeah, yeah. This I was back back in the days when I was just a, a Mac dev doing doing shareware. This was years ago. But uh, nice. good good guy. Right. Yeah. yeah. He came into the chat room really good. This is Gus. Let's see what Gus has to say. Not too much. Gus, Gus doesn't have a lot to say. It's funny how people call in and they don't, have any, they don't say anything. Let's see what B has to say. All right. B didn't have much to say. Look at all these people leaving us. Nothing. Here's one. This is Brian. With a, with hey, Chris, how's it going, man? I saw your uh, Grand Central thing here. I figured I'd give it a shot. I just want to let you know, man, I uh, ordered some uh, domains and hosting and stuff at uh, GoDaddy.com. Good dude. Nice. And uh, I, even when I called them, man, they don't, they don't seem to know anything about the Linux or Linux 20 code. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, I see it on all your videos and things. I figured I would just uh, let you know. Anyways, it's uh, B-R-C-H-I-C-K-E-R-Y at V-A-S-S-A-R dot E-D-U. <laughs> let me know if you have any questions, man. Have a good day. Thanks for the video. And that was his email address, everybody. Ah, oh, good times. Good times. All right, here we go. I'm going to play that because that's probably a common question. Then I'll try to cut it off before he, before he uh, says his. Um All right, go for it. All right, I'm going to close. I'm going to make Skype as do not disturb for a few minutes while. Yeah, we're but we're 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 not going away. So if you've been having trouble with Skype, get it working. Get that get that sucker working, and Vikram. Okay, Brian, we've got a couple of voicemails here. I thought I'd play one of them because I think it's kind of a common one that I've heard a couple of times, and uh, it's just good for people to hear some troubleshooting tips here. Hey, Chris, how's it going, man? I saw your uh, Grand Central thing here. I figured I'd give it a shot. Right on. I just want to let you know, man, I uh, ordered some uh, domains and hosting and stuff at uh, GoDaddy.com. Thanks, man. And uh, even when I called them, man, they don't don't seem to know anything about the Linux or Linux 20 code. So, um, I mean, I see it on all your videos and things. I figured I would just uh, let you know. Anyways, it's... uh, I'm gonna cut him off there because he has email address. So yeah, um, if you uh, if you want to hook us up and you use one of those promo codes, Linux or Linux 20, and it doesn't apply to your cart, there's either uh, probably like the wrong uh, dollar amount, or you have another coupon code already applied. I don't right. think you can use ours with other ones. But it, even still, if that doesn't uh, work for you, do us a big favor. I mean, I really really appreciate it if you do this for us. Uh, email promo. I think it's. Let me get the address for you. I think it's promo questions. Um, yeah. Yeah, promo questions at GoDaddy.com. If you email promo questions at GoDaddy.com with your concerns, not only should they be able to uh, get that promo code uh, balance applied to your account, but they should be able to tell you why it didn't work. And I really would appreciate yeah, appreciate it. It's, it's good for everybody. All right. 
Good times. Hey, um, Chris. Uh, my name is Chris. Kind of weird and weird name. Um, about the Sparks. You're totally right about the Sparks. It has a tart taste. It's a little bitter. It, it, I kind of say it's a bitter. Oh, Sparks. Taste. Yeah, oh. the energy beer. beer. Yeah, I was thinking Spark Stations. Too many of them. You will get the squirts. I've had that problem. Um, there's another drink. It's it's like Sparks. All right, dude. I <laughs> Thanks for calling, buddy. Oh. Hi, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm a student at the University of Pittsburgh at Bradford, and uh, I understand you, you guys are doing. Uh, this is going to be the last. Uh, classic episode of Lennox Action Show coming up, and I figured this would be probably my last chance to get your input on this. What but, uh, is this I was from? Blogging about uh, Kubuntu and Kopi uh, about two weeks ago, oh, and December first. Uh, oh. I noticed that there was a bug that has been in Kopi basically since I started using Linux a couple years ago, and it had never been fixed. And I found a bug report for it, found a forum post, and it's it's a three year old bug. I think and we've used I this before. Yeah, Mike says we've used this. All right, we've, 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 we've right. that's as far as, yeah. We, we haven't plugged back. the voicemail a long time, so I... We had to go through it real quick. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back online with Skype. All right, Skype. we're back online. I think we have time for one more call. We're at yeah, 51 minutes right yeah, now, so we have to wrap up kind of soon. Let's squeeze one more call in here if we can. Uh, if you've got something interesting to say... Give us a ring. You want to be want to be controversial, Mike? You've never called in. You ought yeah, to call in, Mike. Mike, what's up, man? Remember Dean? Dean used to call in all the time. Where, Dean, where's Dean? He still hangs out in the Linux Action Show chat room, but he doesn't call in. That's okay. He's too German to watch the live stream. I guess I'm just kidding. I don't know really. Know. Just, he used to always say, <laughs> and he, "I used to." I'm German. Yeah, Mike says he feels a little pwned by me still. So. Okay. About the whole KDE. All thing. right. So, is there anybody else that wants to call him before we All move right. well, on? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna do this countdown, and I'm gonna do it in my head, so you're not gonna know when I'm done. <laughs> All right, everybody. It's getting closer. Right, I'm not gonna let you know uh, too much, but the number I'm on right now has a two in it. So, is it the number two? <laughs> and uh, All done. Yeah, but you have to wait a second. You have to wait a second because there's a delay in the, in the recording. Three, two. All right, we're out. We're out. All right, guys. Thanks uh, Thanks for those who called in. We'll, we'll do uh, another one. Yeah. Uh, we'll do more soon. And, it's uh, funny. Yeah. I think our grand total was 18 people added us as their contact. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> So uh, yeah, this this last coding with Brian I did uh, just was it this last weekend? Yeah, or the yeah. Week- yeah, yeah. This last weekend, uh, yeah. My my contact list is up to like something like sixty, seventy people. Nice. Uh, yeah, uh, four four people called in, <laughs> but like I was getting constantly. I was keeping having to click. <sighs> well, yeah, and uh, you wonder, yeah. Uh, and people get nervous, yeah. man. It's cool. All right, let's wrap up the. Uh, All right. I do believe. That nearly brings us to the end yeah. of this production. There you have it. Episode, Brian, of Linux Action. Wait, do over show. I uh, I wanted to say <laughs> that we're gonna we're gonna that's that's the last of the calls for this week, and then do uh, and then oh, do right, uh, right, right, or, right, or right. We don't have no, to. no, 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 no. We're gonna do the last of the calls. We'll do the last of the calls bit. That's what I was thinking. Wow, how pro of you! I like it. Yeah, I am pretty pro. This is what I keep Chris around for, guys. It's not the editing. It's not the the technological setup and the wizardry that he possesses. It's that he reminds me to finish out the segments. Three, two. Well, I think that that pretty well wraps it up. We want to take some more calls for sure, um, but uh, we'll have to delay that yep. to a, another time. If you time. want to call into the Linux Action Show, you could always join us during the live stream. Absolutely. And, uh, you can find those over jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. Uh, we are just Linux Action Show in Skype. Uh, we also have the voicemail where you can leave us a voicemail. Head over to our website, and then up there there's a contact us, and we have there like is. a Grand Central dialer that will call you. Um, you just put in your phone number, and you can leave it private so we don't have to know your number if you don't want us to. It'll call you, and then uh, it'll connect the call for you. 
It'll be a local call. It doesn't Boom. cost you a goes thing. goes right in there. Or you can leave us a voicemail on Skype. Thing. And it's very, very fancy. A voicemail yeah. on Skype. Yeah. And uh, we like that. Okay, Brian. Well, thanks everyone who called in, and um, thanks for leaving voicemails. We've listened to all of the voicemails. We've answered some of them uh, before the show because they were left a little while ago, so we didn't put them all in this week's show, but we'd like to get more voicemails. We would. So please do that. Is that all you got? That's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Professionally ended segment. Next week on Access Hollywood. Oh, Chris, that's so super loud right now. He turned up the headphones really loud, guys. It's okay, there we go. Oh, man. All right, Brian, you want to wrap this show up? Oh, we'll, plug the little sto- we'll plug the little store here, and then... Um, ready? Tell me when. Tell me when. I'm, I'm going to do this. As soon as you tell me. As soon as you tell me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. I want to thank everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Everyone, <laughs> for tuning in this week, we had a heck of a great time. I especially want to give a quick shout out to those who joined us for the live. Oh feed. yeah, those so um, much fun. It's, it's getting funner and funner. We're getting this a uh, little more down. Uh, Chris has got this uh, this setup down to a uh, auto magical process. He doesn't even have to work on it. Chris doesn't even spend any time on it. <laughs> it just automatically happens. Yeah, right, Chris? yeah. You just sit down. Just and sit down don't and it have happens. To worry about All it. I have to do is just sit here. Boom. <laughs> and uh, I dance like a monkey, and, and it works fine. People that are watching the live stream while well, we set up for the first time, we sh- live stream today beer as tasty as like a little bonus for before yeah, the show. Yeah. And uh, that's the first time we've ever live streamed from two different rooms. It, uh, back to back. And uh, it worked. It worked, but you know, it's there was a, it's, a few bumps, it, but yeah, come it's a little on, rough because I had to run in here and patch audio and then run yeah. out there and yeah but you know it, it was fun and yeah, besides it's kind of a technological achievement for us to be able to live it stream totally from two different rooms in it's, the house it's kind of fun though because uh, honestly you know we're, do, we're doing it at Chris's pad here and uh, Chris is like playing the dual role of co-host slash technical runner guy slash lackey guy who has to run the cables underneath the desk dun, 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 and uh, dun, dun, dun. yeah he feels pretty he feels pretty beefy right now all right so, uh, so I yeah. want to say if you're curious about how we make these shows well one place you can always start is our store that is jupiterbroadcasting.com slash store and in our gear store we have all of the different equipment we use to make these shows that is really really true you guys yeah there's no doubt about how true that is That's and you and it definitely uh, a- anything you do for from there, anything you buy from there helps us out. Doesn't cost any more to buy it from there. Uh, we just get a little tiny, mm. little fraction of it. And we are mulling over the idea of kind of reopening up our swag store. We are not quite ready yet, but we're thinking about it. We've had a few a, a few people asking, you know. And I also love to support the Linux Action Show wares, so we might be doing that soon. Is is, is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We definitely need to sit down. Uh, you know, I think uh, you know we had the uh, you know the thermonuclear hamster T-shirt for love a while. That one. That's a good shirt. Um, but uh, well, you know, we've said some retarded things since then as well. So I, w- I need to sit down and, and come up with all the retarded things we've said yeah. and put them on shirts. <laughs> right. That's that's the plan. Um, one last thing I'll just mention is if uh, you watch the new Star Trek movie, definitely want to listen to next week's Cast a Blaster, which will also be streamed live. It's uh, be that's this next Tuesday, Tuesday correct? Tuesday, yes. Yeah. It'll, well, In so the we'll see, we're recording this um, on on Saturday, right? So this. Castle Blaster will be out Tuesday the 12th late, and it'll be streamed live like around 6 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday the 12th. Right. We'll review Wolverine and the Star Trek movie. Fantastic. Tons All right, everyone. Fun. Well, thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Linux Action Show. We're back in two weeks. Two weeks. Which just kind of reminds me of that scene from Total Recall. You know what I'm talking about? No. Two weeks. And then, like, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger inside of a lady suit, and all she can say is two weeks. And oh, then yeah, she starts yeah. to bug out, and he yeah, takes her head off. Yeah. 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 Right? Yes. Yes. Uh. Uh, end of broadcast. All right. Um, Ryan uh, B. Sound uh, says the cute one was a little tipsy. Hey, Ryan, let me ask you a question here. <laughs> A uh, few things. The first and most important for me is which one is the cute one? And when you tell me that it's me, how much can I hold this over Chris's head? Uh, and then how do I make it that it's not creepy that you called me well, cute, the cute one? Well, how do you know one? different people don't have different tastes? 
Um, but see, what I want, though, is I want to hold it over your head. I don't care if it's I true see, or I not. See. I got you. I really don't care if he considers me the cute one. I just want him to say that. Uh, and he doesn't even say it in public. You know, if, he, if he's a little embarrassed, if Ryan B. Uh, B. Sound is a little embarrassed, it's cool. It's cool. No worries, man. You know, we're not a judgmental crew here. Uh, you can... Uh, <coughs> judges. Yeah, I judge. I, I do. I do. I judge. That's what we call Chris at work. What's that? <laughs> the cute one. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, we're... Uh, I re- where do you work, man? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> there you go, man. Ham that up. <laughs> Little cutie pants over there, huh? Huh? All right. In a whole office building. Let's, I want, wait, don't tell me where you work. I want to imagine that you're in this big office building and everyone knows who Chris is and calls him the cute one. I like that. <laughs> the ladies are swooning. <laughs> All right, guys, this this conversation is actually starting to get a little weird for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I opened up that can of worms. And I really shouldn't have been opening it up. Yeah, I know. I just kind of like, OK. All right, we're good. Let's talk about something else, huh? Oh, yeah, I've got some messages over here. I didn't get to. Um, all right, so yeah, there's no uh, no coding with Brian tomorrow, uh, Guru dude. Uh, are you actually in the in the chat room here? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, because tomorrow is Mother's Day, and I scheduled it without <laughs> remembering uh, that <laughs> that it's Mother's Day. Yeah, I know. I asked, man. I asked. Uh, I'm not gonna ask that question anymore. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's. Um, I'm not sure. Coding with Brian is definitely gonna be every Sunday. Um, at noon, just because that worked out really well. We got people in the U.S. and we got people in Europe, and it's just a really convenient time. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have another episode between now and next Sunday, simply because the evening episodes in the States um, are not quite as awesome. You know what I mean, Chris? I mean, yeah. there's just, I just, you know, it, it's a little more harder for people to make. I could do one, but, you know why? So um, I, I think I think I'll probably wait. There probably won't be a new one this week. Um, but, uh, I'm, uh, I'm definitely, there'll be one next Sunday. So a week from the t- time this is coming out. So a week from tomorrow, the best place I'm gonna hit this um, uh, the internet will work just fine, Chris, Over if you want to use, yeah, yeah. If you want to do that, um, I should be on my, um, instant messaging, uh, services. Hey, there you are. You're on those also. Yeah, yeah, Ranma. Um, I, we've been doing them in the I, at noon, basically just a high noon Pacific time. That way, um, it's hey, there you go, Chris. Perfect. All right, let's see what we got here. This week in Linux Action Show. Chris likes to write these. For those of you who haven't seen these before, Chris writes them. I read them. I'm the monkey. All right, Chris, this week in Linux Action Show, we give you the updates on all your favorite things. <coughs> do you know what's awesome about the new Mandriva? Because we do. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> uh, the viewers, not the views. Uh, bring what? it to us with their questions, and we answer them live and on the air. Then we go over the highlights of Linux Fest Northwest. Well, so much more. Yeah, that works pretty well. All right. That works pretty well. <laughs> this week in Linux Action Show, uh, we I'm find gonna, out who's the cute one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to post a Brian script in the chat room so you can see when he screws up. Oh, God, you guys. You want to message that another, another version to me so I don't... <clears throat> Of course, now you're going to get it right now that I, uh, now that I made a... that challenge. All right. All right. Let's see if I can one uh, one. All right. These. So my mic goes on mute. I am going to be muted. Okay. And now I'm muted. <coughs> I run more Linux than Chris does. Stupid Chris. All right. Here we go. Ready? Stupid Chris. <laughs> Hold on. I got I got to preset up the stupid Chris for when I for when I don't <coughs> one off this and then uh, he makes fun of me. I have to have something I can come back in with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Tell me when you're ready. Are you kidding me? Born ready. This week on the Linux Action Show, we give you the updates on all your favorite things. Do you know what's awesome about the new Mandriva? Because we do. The viewers bring it to us with their questions, and we answer them 
live on the air. Then we go over the highlights of Linux Fest. That sucked. I want to redo that. Okay. See, that doesn't count as as a not a first take because that was self aborted, you guys. I didn't flub up the words. I got it. I just well, I kind of I kind of flubbed. That it up. was totally a first take. Okay, here we go. Son of a. <laughs> Three. <clears throat> this week on the Linux Action Show, we give you the updates on all of your favorite things. Do you know what's awesome about the new Mandriva? Because we do. The viewers bring it to us with their questions, and we answer them live and on the air. Then we go over the highlights of Linux Fest Northwest, plus so much more. All oh, this week. On the Linux Action Show. How was that? Very good. Did you that almost one I liked. did you almost forget to say on did you almost forget the very end? The all this week? Like, no. Yeah. I no. Was, I was okay. That's called dramatic. Pause I wasn't sure. Right I wasn't there. sure because uh, you almost had an expression on your face like, oh fuck, I just for, I forgot what I'm supposed to say next. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay. That was dramatic pause. Well, good job, sir. Good job. That's that's years of training here, Chris. Right. Oh, I wanted to say in the in the show that we're going to do a um, <laughs> like a, I don't know I want to do some sort of event for our live show I was I don't know something live in person I don't know like what go somewhere and re and have you know oh get for for the uh, for, for the, the three year anniversary for the three anniversary on the tenth of June honestly that would be awesome I know we still got a couple episodes to plug it though I think well um, no, no 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 we only have two I think or three um let's see two. Uh, the twenty third and the sixth are the next episodes. So the, let's see. So the it's June sixth is basically our three year anniversary episode. There's only one episode in between now and then. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we want. to. What do you think? It would be cool to do an event. I mean, it's been three years of the Linux Action Show. Yeah. I don't know what though. I don't either. Mm. We probably shouldn't say anything until we have something figured out. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you guys have any ideas, especially if you're in the in the the greater Pacific Northwest region and you'd be interested in something like that. I'm not really sure what we'd do. Uh I mean Yeah, I really don't know. So I want to do a bumper, uh, a billboard, and um I would like to do like um let me think here. Um this week's episode of the Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Use the promo code Linux and save yourself 10%. And then I'll jump in and say, and by donators like you or something like that. This is the Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. What was the rest of you on in? Use our promo code Linux, save yourself 10%. And okay. then I'll say, and of course, by listeners like you. Or oh, how like very PBS-y. Yeah, I like that. Think? All right. Okay, here we go. In three, two... This episode of the Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Use the code. <laughs> uh, I, was just, I was sitting there trying to think. I'm like, like, what kind of code is it? Is it a discount code? Is it a coupon code? I, I just say promo code. But wow, that's an even say, different word. Say discount code. That's no, right. fuck it. I'm gonna use. I mean, f it. F that. I know. I'm gonna use the promo code Linux. Okay, here we go. In <laughs> three, <laughs> two. This episode of the Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Use the promo code Linux and save yourself an additional 10% on any order. And of course, it's brought to you by listeners like you. Thanks so much for your donations. The more you know. Did I not record that again? Am I, have I, did I hit play again? I think you recorded that. Okay. I've yeah. been getting... I like it. Yeah? <laughs> That's kind of cute. I was trying to think of like a music I could put to that. Something like kind of campy. Mm -hmm. I'll, f I'll figure something out. Yeah, All right. for sure. You like that? I do. Yeah, that came up fairly well. Okay, guys. Well, we've been streaming for hours, so we're going to stop the recording right now. Oh, we have, haven't we? Well, I'm going to hit the stop button on the recording. If you've watched the little video version of the Linux Action Show, we hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to hear your feedback. So please give us comments on what we could change and improve, and we will continue to do so. Thanks, guys.